wasn't gonna click ding the gong, which is actually a crystal bowl to start, but I figured why not? I, this is how we open up every sacred container. So welcome everyone. Mm, the records are now open. The records would be the Akashic records, which contain every detail past, present, and future here inside our universal paradigm, our universal collective that we are all sharing. So in essence, you can also look at the Akashic Records as universal mind or God mind that we can all tap into as we are experiencing this, uh, <laughs> What do you call it? This, this, it, it really is an experiment. It is a divine experiment of galactic proportions as human beings are waking up to the truth of who we are, the potential of who we are. My name is Emily Harrison. I'm the founder director here inside the Akashic Academy and my area of expertise is in guiding humanity by using the Akashic records as we're stepping into uh, this We'll call it the revolution of illuminaries. There are thought leaders, visionaries, leaders here on the planet who are being activated with this cosmic knowledge that is coming in. And you are one of these beings. You are a member of this tribe that is here to make change. You are an illuminary if you were here watching inside of this space. By the way, if it is the first time that you're here, Please let me know that you are a first timer. And for all of you who have been regular parts of this space, thank you so much and please say hello. So I can make sure to circle back and say hello to each one of you. What we are going to do today inside of this space is we're gonna tap into the field together. Okay, I am going to channel wisdom that comes through. So if you have questions about the Akashic Records, about your life specifically, about the changes that we're experiencing here on the planet, please type those in. And I'm going to ask Spirit to bring my awareness to a question that will be of benefit to the entire container here for bringing forward some wisdom, knowledge, and activation. If the message resonates with you, but it's not your question. The message is for you. That's the way it works. So please, even if you didn't specifically ask a question, if you resonate with the message coming in, that is a message for you from your Akashic Records. The message also contains activation. It's not just cerebral. Okay, it will begin to shift energy, rearrange data inside of your field. So fully receive it, own it if it's for you. Okay, um, and also know that if your question does not get addressed publicly here in this space, that you are indeed inviting forward information from your Akashic Records, regardless of if I'm the channel or not. I'm actually just, the, I'm like the, I'm the switch. I'm the switch that you flip on and I conduct the energy. Then pay attention to what you get because it matters truly less about what I say. It matters what drops in for you in this space. Okay, is this making sense for you guys? This is making sense. Send some love likes, hearts across the screen. I'm going to ask you each, hi mama, that lady right there that says Jan Harrison across the bottom, that's my mom. What's up mama? I'm gonna ask each one of you to please take a moment and share this out. One of the most uh, profound ways that we can serve the mission right now on the planet is to share knowledge. This is another paradigm that's breaking down as we're learning to collaborate rather than compete with each other. So I'm gonna drop some badass secret knowledge here for you that's gonna feel like, oh, I just got a new secret wand. I got a new magic wand in my pocket. You can't keep the wand for yourself, people. You gotta share the wands, okay? Let's start by creating and opening the sacred space here together. So we're gonna do a little something called synchronized breathing. Breathing is a way to instantaneously expand your consciousness. And again, this is a space for illuminaries, for visionaries. If you know yourself in this realm already, awesome. I'm so glad you're here. See it for other people who are joining in this space as we're doing the breath work. If you feel like you might be an illuminary wannabe, 
that's fine. We're all wannabes in some area. You're in the right place. You're in a place where you can learn to stretch. You can learn to find vocabulary. You can learn to find embodied practice that allows you to hold the frequency of a luminary because that's really, that's what defines us as an illuminary or not an illuminary. It truly, it's not whether you feel that way about yourself. It's can you feel that vibration? Can you hold that vibrational frequency? So we're going to do some breathing here and call in that energy of being a luminary. So each one of you can receive powerful wisdom, instantaneous downloads from the Akash as we're working in this space. Take a nice deep breath in with me. Calling your power to you, tapping that chi energy. Notice I haven't exhaled yet. I'm gently pausing here at the top of my breath. Now exhale. Feel your energy changing already. This is us creating the field together. Deep breath in. And as we're calling this chi energy forward, we're calling intention forward, nice slow release. Please make a commitment to yourself that in this space, you're going to focus on possibility. Deep breath in. Gentle pause at the top of that breath. Make a commitment to yourself. You'll focus on your dreams. Illuminaries choose to focus on the positive, to focus on solutions. Deep breath in. Illuminaries are responsible with their spiritual gifts. Good. Feel that energy changing inside of your body already. Feel yourself tapping into this higher expression. Good. One more nice deep breath in. Illuminaries have infinite access to expanded creativity. I am an illuminary. Just gently say that to yourself, programming your cells. All right, so we're gonna dive into some questions here. I see some questions rolling in. I am going to roll on back here. And again, start pulling up the questions. If you have a question that you would like to ask in this space, please feel free to type it in. And we are going to get down to some business here. All righty, let's see. Teddy Craddock says, what about me and Linda F? Okay, so this is a really, really great example of a non-specific question. So I want you guys to ask really specific questions. Teddy, thank you for this. Anytime that we are asking about ourselves and another person that we're in a relationship with, it's we're generally looking for confirmation. Um, generally, we know deep down underneath what is going on in a particular relationship, and we just need someone to help us out a little bit through it. Generally, there's stuff that we want to see in relationships too that we're not seeing in relationships. So I'm gonna encourage you to get really, really specific and see if you can craft a, a more specific question about what, what are the areas that you feel like you might be stuck? Let's, uh, rather than just like, what, what what's going on with me and this person? Give me some... You got to remember this, if, if we're really looking for insight here, it's not about a psychic test or a psychic challenge or um, hoping that the, the psychic or the medium will say what it is that you want to say to hear so that you feel better, right? So see if you can dig in a little deeper and I will uh, keep an eye out for your question there, Teddy. So thank you for letting me um, use that question that you brought in as an opportunity to teach about getting really specific and claiming that which we want and um, owning our own, owning the knowledge that we have up until this point. That is great. That is freaking great. I'm telling my guides. So what just dropped in is that the guides are saying, if, if one who's asking the question is not willing to own the amount of information that they already know, the records can't do anything or can't impart any 
uh, anything to really help you. So I, I coined this phrase that I used on some people along the way in my life who play dumb. Don't play dumb with me. All right, because not, not to say that Teddy's playing dumb, by the way. Teddy, you've been a beautiful example for all of us to learn today. So again, my gratitude and thank you very much. But you know, sometimes you can be in romantic relationships where the other person just seems like they're playing a little dumb. So my phrase became, be as smart as you are. Okay, let's don't play dumb here. Let's be as smart as we are. That's what the guides are saying right now in terms of using the records to their highest um, potential to get the, get the best outcome from this space is that we want to get really specific. We want to own what it is that we want. We want to be as smart as we are. And we need to always be willing to course correct and take ownership for our miscreations, okay? So I'm gonna scroll through and see, Teddy, if there's anything else coming in, but the guides are focusing right there for you after a lot of jabbering and a lot of preaching about how you didn't ask the right damn question. Obviously you asked the perfect question because so much is coming through, okay? Um, but here's the guides are suggesting that you take a look at what was miscreated in this relationship. Because we create and we miscreate. Miscreate means, oops, I manifested something that I didn't exactly mean to manifest it that way. But trust that you did manifest it perfectly so that what you need to learn can come to the surface, be witnessed, be expressed, be experienced, uh, and a lot of times be released. Okay, is that making sense for everybody? Let me know if that is making sense. Okay, I scrolled through. I did not see another question from Teddy. Teddy, are you still here? Let me know if you're still here if you hopped off. <laughs> I guess I'll know if you hopped off if you don't let me know you're here. All right, so let's see. Um, I like to bring in activations that go along with these. So here's the activation that Spirit would like to bring in the opportunity to witness a miscreation in your life. Okay? Miscreations are the oopsies, oopsies that we did with our magic wand when we became incredibly powerful manifestors and the situation didn't turn out exactly how we wanted and there are lessons there. All right? Every single one of us have one. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes right now. Take a few nice deep breaths. And I'm just going to ask Spirit to bring forward um, any lessons around a miscreation for you. Looks like the Wi-Fi blinked. It looks like we're back here. So calling forward any miscreations where some reflection or some gathering of wisdom from that situation would be helpful. And just notice what's popping up in your mind right now and trust it. This is how the Akashic records work and how we begin to get really good at extracting information is we pay attention to what runs through the imagination. The imagination is the gateway. You have subtle senses. You'll either see an image, you'll hear a voice, you'll feel a feeling. You won't exactly know how it all came in. That's why there's nuance to this work. One of the biggest um, deficits or problems that illuminaries face, that evolutionaries face, is there aren't containers where they can go deep into the work and cultivate their skills with other high-level um, humans who have spent time expanding their consciousness. And there is a powerful collective frequency that happens when we do this work with other visionaries, with other illuminaries. And so many times we just don't have the space in real life to do that. Or the establishments, the cultural establishments, religious esta establishments, community establishments aren't necessarily, haven't necessarily like made the shift yet where we're finding that this kind of ritual, ceremony, learning, um, is cultivated and there is a sacred space kept for in society. We're getting there. They're coming. You have mystery schools. You have places like this where you can tap in and begin to cultivate 
your skills. There are retreats, there are programs that you can dive into and we're, we're seeing more and more of them rising up. This is the ancient wisdom that is coming back and quite possibly many of you out there are part of this evolutionary process of bringing more of this ancient wisdom to the surface in ways that we can uh, begin to integrate it into our normal everyday society. And trust me, things, all things get good when we're living in a 5D society. We're experiencing um, very high levels of creativity, genius, peace, collaboration, abundance, ease, effortlessness as we begin to wake up and to cultivate these skills. But the problem is when we are asleep, we cannot fully tap our ability to create a joyful life and an easy experience. So we need to be in places where we are doing this together. All right, let's grab one more question here today. Let me scroll through. Um, oh, this is a beautiful question. Okay, Racely. Oh, was that was that decent? Did I pronounce that decently? Erasely Rosso says, is daydreaming the same as imagination for spiritual growth? Um, I don't. OK, so we're, we're talking semantics here. What daydreaming is to me, what daydreaming is to you. Daydreaming for me, yes, definitely an aspect of calling in the imagination for spiritual growth. Now, if you tend to be a daydreamer, here's a way that you can actually begin to use that um, skill. I'm going to call it a skill. I was going to call it a habit, but then I thought, ah, that's not a habit. It's better. It's better than a habit. It's a skill. Here's how you can use your daydreaming more purposefully to advance yourself spiritually. Okay, to advance yourself in the quantum realms, to increase your metaphysical skill level. I want you to notice when you are imagining, when you're daydreaming, when you're using the imagination, do your best, make a mindful attempt to go through each one of the senses and engage the senses in the dream, the daydream. Okay. Um, the guides are saying just now, metaphorically, symbolically speaking, daydream is actually really fantastic because it's a way of um, infusing ideas that are outside the realm of normal possibility, I should say. Um, it's, it, it's, a way, it's a way of breaking the barriers of limitation and infusing it into the matrix. So really good stuff, that daydreaming. As you begin to engage each one of the senses, so pretending in your daydream that there is scent, uh, that you can feel viscerally wind or temperature or um, wetness or dryness, engaging, um, let's see, smell, well, we didn't do taste. I did smell and feel. We did feely and smelly. Uh, imagine a taste. Imagine... Tune in to, so like sometimes it's interesting. You can, does anybody ever have like a medley taste sometimes in their mouth? This can be an indication of the Clairgustians, which is not one of our more prominent Clairs, although it's coming online much more. Um, it, it, you do not have to associate a metal or a funky taste in your mouth, by the way. You can imagine delicious blueberry muffins if that's part of your daydream but definitely bringing in as many of the senses as you can. Because as you do this, each one of those senses is calibrated to your clear sense, same one -er. How's that? Let me explain. Let me explain a bit more clearly here, okay? Here's what I mean. For your out, outward senses, sight, taste, smell, touch, and feel, you have an inner component to all of those senses as well. And as you begin to exercise those in imagination, in your imagination time, you're actually turning on your ability to um, get messages through those particular senses. And those senses are how we interpret the energy that's coming in from the records or spirit or the realm. Right? 
Yeah, same one, her Kelly. That's right. We're, it, it's all about the same winner. All right, so how many of you received a, a little value or a little nugget of, oh yeah, I, re, I have exercises that I can do to strengthen my clear senses. I have things that I can do to make myself better at this process. Yes, yes, good, thank you all. Good, good, good. I like it when there is uh, value in things dropping for each one of you. Mel says, lots of metal tasting and metal dripping um, out of the corner of the eyes. Oh, that's interesting. Kelly says yes. All right, let's see. I think I actually, I have a little more time here. Let's dive in and grab one more question. All right, Annalise Schmidt. This question looks like it came in just a little bit ago. So Annalise, if you are still in the house with us, let me know. And Annalise says, what is it that is stopping me from moving forward? Um, Annalise, you haven't fully, and this is, this is for a lot of people too, you haven't fully claimed what it is that you want. You're still conforming what you want to what you think is appropriate, what you think is doable, what you think you will be accepted for. And for the vast majority of us, we are so stuck in this, and including myself, I get stuck in this place too, where it's like getting in touch with what I really want. If nobody was going to judge me, if nobody was going to tell me that um, I shouldn't want that or that is bad or there was no program of guilt that allowed me to not receive what it was that I truly wanted, what would I want? And that's the question we need to be asking ourselves. As illuminaries, we are here to bring in the infinite possibility. And if you're not dreaming or playing from the space of infinite possibility, you can't, you can't fool the expansion of human consciousness. Okay, if you are down with human consciousness, if you like to expand, if you like the potential that's coming forward, if this excites you, if this is an adventure, then guess what? You got to play full out. Consciousness is no, it's not going to bullshit with you. You can't like dip your toe in and then go and then, no, if you are going to ask for the cosmic mysteries of not only the universe, but you and who you are and why you function the way that you have, which is truly the same thing as the universe. Because the macrocosm and the microcosm are all the same. But if you're going to be bold enough to ask for this information, you can't dip your toe in the water. You've got to know 100% what it is that you want. You've got to be willing to play in the space of infinite possibility. And consciousness knows if you're dicking around. Okay? Bold, yes. we got to be very bold with this. The information inside or that's available to us when we dive into the expansion of consciousness uh, has the ability to take us down, to destroy us if it's not used to its highest potential. If we are not boldly seeking the highest good for ourselves and everyone connected to us, if we are not boldly willing to seek and claim self-love, if we're not boldly willing to play in the space of infinite possibility, then it's amateur hour. And that's okay. It's just not what we, it's just not here. It's just not the Akashic Academy. This is the place where visionaries step into their most illuminated selves and embody the highest potential because there is work to do here on the planet and you know you're a part of it. You may not know exactly what that looks like. I hear that so often. There's more, Emily. There's more. I don't know what it is. I felt it since I was a little child. Yeah, there is more. There's a lot more. And as soon as you commit yourself to knowing what that is and inviting it forward, somebody like me, a wisdom keeper, maybe me, maybe not me, but it's me now because here we all are together. So I get to play the role for you now. A wisdom keeper, an ally, that ally that can offer you the secret elixir and take you from the ordinary world into the extraordinary world will show up in your field and it will be your job to boldly say yes. And very few people do. And that's okay. 
So for those of you who are the ones who are here to do that work and you're ready to dive in, you know where to find me. Please feel to reach out to me. Send me a private message. I'm sure we have much more to chat about. And if you're here tapping your, uh, sticking your toe in the water, you know what? I'm glad you're here. If you are a toe dipper and you're new, go over to the AkashicAcademy.com and check out our resource library. We have a tremendous free resource library for those who are diving in and learning. And for those who are ready for the most profound transformation and embodiment, stepping into what is possible, we have resources for you too. Uh, and strap in if you want uh, to hop on that journey because it is one of epic proportions. I actually have some really, really exciting news. Um, crazy metaphysical, uh, let's see, the buzz in the field kind of announcements to share with you all as the week goes on. It's, a, it's an incredibly exciting week for me. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna drop little bits as we go. I, I've been waiting for this particular week and next week to arrive for maybe six months now because there's a badassery on the horizon. Stick around this week if you want to learn more. I cannot wait to share with you all. I'm so happy that you guys are here. Thank you deeply. Namaste and I'll see you here again.